Hi, this is Russell Stanner from teachertraininvideos.com. I've had loads of questions about how the screen share works in Zoom, and actually that is probably the most important part of what Zoom is. The way that Zoom really works is that you use the, the screen share to share content uh, that you want to work with with your students. So for example, you might want to play them a video, and there's a couple of important things about that. You might want to put up an exercise for them to do, and there's a way for you to get them to interact with that. Um, and you may want to play through a PowerPoint or something. So what I'm going to do is just focus on the screen share and go through it exactly the way it works, and hopefully by then really make it clear. One of the key things is to make sure you've got everything set up before you start. So make sure you've got all your screens ready that you want to share. So have your PowerPoint open, have your, your YouTube video page ready, have your document ready, because that will make life much, much easier. So this isn't an introductory video. I'm not going to start from the beginning. I'm going to start from, right, how do we screen share? How does it work? Hope you like the video, hope it's useful to you. If it is, please share it with other teachers, getting loads of teachers asking me questions about this. And uh, any questions or comments, leave them below. I'm trying my best to keep up with all the questions and the comments that I'm receiving. And of course, if you want to come and join me on my YouTube channel, I'm gonna be making lots more videos at the moment to help teachers with uh, teaching online. So let's get started with Zoom and screen sharing. Okay, so now you can see me absolutely enormously on the screen. I'm gonna turn myself off. I don't wanna be on the screen quite so big. Okay, we're gonna concentrate on screen share. Now, the first thing about screen share is that you need to make sure that whatever you are going to present, you have got it open already on the screen. And let me just give you a quick example. So you can see I've got this PowerPoint slide. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna run that PowerPoint slide so that I've got it ready to actually play. Okay, so I've got it into share mode. I'm gonna come back now to my screen share. I'm um, sorry, to, to my Zoom, open it up full thing. Now I'm gonna turn on the share screen and I can actually see that that PowerPoint slide is ready. I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna share it. And off we go, all right now. If I come to, one thing to remember, if I click on the screen and then use the control keys, I can move through the slides. However, okay, watch this. If I come up to here and click on a note, and then I wanna kind of start drawing on the screen, so I point on something like that. Now I can't move forward, because at the moment, this is what's active, not the PowerPoint slide. So if I click here, all I'm gonna get is dots. So what you need to do is, if you wanna move on to another slide, is click on the mouse, click on the screen, and now you're active again, and you can move forward. But you would have noticed as well, something else happens, okay? Before you move forward, you need to click on clear, clear all drawings. Now I know all of this because I've been doing training this week and that is one of the problems that keeps happening. Let me go through that again. So let's stop the share, go back right through the process, open up your PowerPoint slides by clicking on it and clicking on share. Brilliant. Click on the PowerPoint screen so that you're on. That is the focus. You can go through the slides, no problem. If at any time you want to talk, um, you want to write on the screen, up you go to the top here, Click on a note, do your annotations, whatever you want to do, you can draw around things. But remember, if you want to go onto a next page, first of all, clear the drawing, then click on mouse, click on screen. Now the screen is active and you'll be able to move forward. And now you can draw again. Okay, so again, you would come back. So you've got to learn. Okay, we're going to stop sharing that screen. So I'm going to click on stop share. That brings me back. Remember, I can always put my video on at any time and just turn it back off again, all right? And sometimes when you're doing screen share, that's the way you might want to work. So while you're doing this, while you're not doing the screen share, you're on the screen. Once you've, when you're going to do screen share, turn it off. So just focus on the screen share. Right, next thing about screen share, if we're going to do a YouTube video, what's the best way of working? So I've got a video ready, I click on screen share. Now, one thing I need you to understand, when you're working with video, you need to choose the video, click on this button, because this, what it's called is, um, this one here, share computer sound, that's what we call system sound, allows your participants, your students, to listen to the video 
through the system rather than through your microphone. So you wanna make sure that you've clicked on that and then again, you click on the share button. Now one other thing, and then you can play the video and they're seeing exactly what you're seeing. Now I'm just gonna stop sharing a minute there. So I'm gonna click back again and just point out something else as well, that you have got this optimized screen sharing for video clips. So let's just click on, click on that. I'm not 100% sure what that does. Uh, it doesn't seem to make massive difference. It may mean, for example, that only that part of the video is played. But now you are playing a video. Now one of the things that I like about Zoom is that you've got control. Because you are playing the video through screen share it means that if you play the video and you stop the video that also happens for the students now not all systems work like that so some systems you can be playing the video but the students might decide to pause the video or go back or play something else you actually haven't got control so the nice thing about zoom is that when you play the video that is exactly what the students see so you know what your students have seen okay when you're working with um uh, when you're working with video. Super quick publicity, if you come to the front page of teachertrainingvideos.com, I've put lots of videos on about teaching online. If you wanna learn about any of the key technologies, just click on them across the top here as well. Loads of videos, for example, on Moodle. If you wanna follow my work, sign up to the newsletter, that way you'll be updated with all the new videos, the blog posts, the uh, webinars that I run and the online courses. And of course, please join me on my YouTube channel. Right, let's get back to the video. Now, something that a lot of people have been asking me about is, can we get the students to draw on the screen? So instead of you drawing on the screen, can you get your students to do it? And the answer is yes. And I'm gonna show you an example when I was doing some training yesterday with a friend of mine and I'm showing her how she can draw, I can pass control. So she's the student, I'm the teacher. And there is a few tricks here. First of all, obviously screen share, Sh choose pen so that you've got the pen active and then pass control and you can pass remote control to the student and the list of all the students will come up. I choose Elena and then suddenly she can write on the screen. And then I can just go up to the top and then revoke control at any time that I want to take, bring control back to me. Now, the thing to do is to turn the pen on first so that when you pass control to whoever you want to pass it to, they've got the pen, they can start drawing on the screen. At any point, you can come back and revoke control. So I'm gonna show you this live. I really hope it helps because I think it's a, something that we all need um, and something can be really useful Probably quite hard to manage if you've got big classes, but if you follow the steps that I'm showing you now, it should make it manageable. I'm going to give you yeah, I'm going to, a note, and I can now note things on the screen, right? And yeah. you should be able to see that. Is that correct? Yeah. Can you see me I writing on see. the screen? Now I fight. So what I do is I go to the top of the screen. I roll over until there's a little drop down menu that comes along and then I choose remote control and I say give mouse and keyboard control to Elena, which I'm gonna do again okay. now. I choose the person. Now you should be yeah. able to do it again. Yeah. Is that right? Can you yes. write, yeah, okay. And then if I wanna yeah. take back control, I roll up to the top of the screen again, roll over let me just click on this drop down menu. So I have to click on it for the drop down menu to come. I click on remote control and I say abort control and now control okay. comes back to me. Okay, I really hope that helped you. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me about the screen sharing in Zoom. So hopefully now that's made that clear how you do video, how you do PowerPoint, how you get the students to interact with the content. Zoom is great for a live session. One of the other things about Zoom is that you can actually use it for screen capture. Those of you that follow my work know that I'm screen capture mad and uh, everything I do is about screen capture. And in fact, Zoom can be used for screen capture because you can record a lesson. And if you do a lesson with no one else, just yourself and record it, then you've got yourself a screen capture. So it can be really useful for that. There are quite a few advanced features in Zoom that we can use and a few things that we can use it for. A lot of people use it for screen capture. Obviously, the only thing is when you use a screen capture facility in Zoom, uh, you are limited, uh, you can't edit it or anything like that. Uh, hopefully, if you come to teacher training videos, as I pointed out before, there's some lots of other free videos on using uh, tools 
Obviously, one thing I'd really recommend if you're a teacher or a small school and you haven't got a virtual learning environment, then learn to use Edmodel. Edmodel and Zoom together can be really powerful. Edmodel for all the homework and the activities and the exercises, and then Zoom to do the live sessions. Obviously, you need to think about the input side of things. That's very, very difficult. There's a lot to think about in terms of how can you deliver your train changing from teaching in a classroom context to teaching online. And it's not the same. You can never get as much as you can out of the classroom, but you can achieve some things. And if you combine it with Edmodel, then uh, you can do a good job. As I've said before, if you want to, please follow me on my newsletter. I update you all the time, send you all the latest videos, blog posts, etc. And of course, join me on my YouTube. And I really hope that video is useful. If it was, like it, share it, comment on it. That'd be great. I really try my best to keep up with all the questions. And thank you very much.